Siri is Apple's mark in the voice and digital assistant space. It has been around for many years now and has been of great benefit to many Apple users across different Apple devices. In this video, we're going to explore the history of Siri, how it evolved over the years, and what the future may look like for it. Some of you might think that Apple started Siri, but that's not actually the case. The original concept of Siri was authored by a scientific research organization called SRI International, which used a speech recognition engine that was provided by a software company called Nuance Communications. Now, this was all around the mid-2000s. In February 2010, Siri was released as an iOS app. But just two months later, Apple acquired Siri and integrated it into the iPhone 4S, which released on October 4th of 2011. This obviously involved removing the Siri app from the iOS app store. Ever since its integration, Siri became a very important part of not just iPhones, but also other Apple devices like the iPad, the Mac, and the Apple TV. But what was Siri like in its early days? When Apple introduced Siri in beta back in 2011, it was capable of applying a range of voice commands, which by 2011 standards was actually pretty good. Some examples include checking basic information, like the weather and the time, performing phone and text actions, and scheduling events and reminders. A couple of aspects already stood out about Siri at this stage. First, Siri was able to recognize the voice of the main user. This was essentially a glimpse of something quite significant, which is that Siri is a piece of software that has noticeable learning capacities. This may seem normal to you today, but it wasn't exactly common back in the day, especially not in 2011. This ties with the second aspect, which is the emphasis on personal user context. This means that Siri was already capable of familiarizing itself and manipulating user-related information as instructed by the user at such an early stage. This was quite brilliantly demonstrated in the Apple Keynote, where Scott Forstall asked Siri whether he had anything happening at a particular time on a particular day, before he then asked Siri to respond to a related text message he had just received. In terms of initial reception, it was a bit of a mix. Siri received a lot of praise for these two elements I just discussed. At the same time though, it was criticized for not being sufficiently flexible in terms of variations of a particular voice command. So even though Apple demonstrated that you could ask for the same thing in different ways, this didn't necessarily always work. Another criticism was that Siri struggles to understand some English accents, whether native or foreign. Now this is an issue that you can probably never fully address. In fact, we do still occasionally see instances of Siri not being able to understand certain people who speak with certain accents, but of course, even though we may sometimes come across this issue today, it's nowhere near as bad as it was in 2011. There is another aspect about the old Siri that I personally didn't like. Now, this didn't affect the functionality, so it's not as bad as the limitations I talked about earlier. It's more to do with the aesthetics, and that's basically Siri's voice being kind of robotic. Here's a sample so that you know what I'm talking about. Here's the weather for today. Thankfully, this is no longer the case today, and Siri obviously sounds much more natural. With the release of iOS 7 in 2013, Siri received a major interface update to go with the rest of the operating system. We also started seeing improvements to the voices of Siri, that is, the voices themselves, but also other improvements like the addition of a male voice as opposed to only female voices. Some other notable features that Apple gave to Siri include the Hey Siri command, which was added in 2014. This was a solution that allowed users to activate Siri without having to press and hold a button, which was especially useful when a user couldn't physically hold their Apple device. But Apple didn't stop there, as there were several subsequent improvements relevant to this particular feature. First, Apple updated the Hey Siri feature in 2015 to ensure that it only works for the owner of the device. This is designed to prevent unauthorized activation of this feature. For example, imagine you've left your phone somewhere and someone else happened to see it nearby. Before this addition, they could potentially cause damage if they had malicious intent by activating Siri and asking it to perform some tasks. Now you may think about this and say, oh, but the phone is locked, so they wouldn't be able to do anything with it. Well, first of all, the average person probably doesn't touch or maybe doesn't even know about the allow Siri when locked option, which is enabled by default. Also, while Siri can't perform certain functions unless the phone is unlocked, there are other functions that it can perform, including making calls and sending text messages. But moving on, iOS 17 and iPad OS 17 allowed users to just say Siri to activate Siri instead of Hey Siri, which is, you know, a nice little change. But a more practical improvement was the support for back-to-back -back commands, meaning that you wouldn't need to activate Siri every time you need to talk to it. 
Among other useful features, like Siri supporting language translation, Apple expanded the capabilities of Siri to include support for commands involving third-party apps. Now before that, you could get Siri to perform tasks only involving system apps. But most, if not all, users will be using third-party apps on top of system apps. So that was obviously a welcome addition. Unfortunately, however, despite all of those additions, Siri was starting to fall behind other digital assistants, especially Alexa and Google Assistant. The main problem is that the other two digital assistants were simply smarter than Siri, allowing them to perform more actions, and so these extended beyond the scope of what Siri is capable of. An example of this would be when Siri responds with, here's what I found on the web, to a certain command, whereas its counterparts are actually able to do what the user asks them to. There were more recent updates to the interface of Siri, the most significant of which was not having Siri take up the entire display anymore, but instead only part of it. This is more convenient if you have something open and you need to keep it open while using Siri, which wasn't previously possible because the Siri interface would take up the entire display. But let's focus on the more serious additions. With the recent release of Apple Intelligence, Siri received improvements including greater language understanding, awareness of personal context, the ability to execute commands across different apps and being able to provide information about the user's Apple device, mainly features and settings. As well as this, Apple integrated ChatGPT into Siri, allowing Siri to refer to ChatGPT for certain requests. All of these improvements were made for Siri with the intention of taking user experience to a whole different level. Now unfortunately, Apple intelligence doesn't seem to be performing at a level that is consistent with Apple's hopes and the expectations of users. This includes Siri's failure to execute certain commands, but also ChatGPT's failure to provide accurate assistance when Siri determines that ChatGPT should be used for a particular user request. But the shortcomings of Apple Intelligence aren't just limited to Siri. We're also seeing such failures in other Apple Intelligence-based features, including the cleanup feature, which uses AI to remove unwanted objects from photos. A simple comparison with Samsung's object eraser feature is enough for us to understand the unfavorable position that Apple Intelligence is currently in relative to its counterparts. It seems like Apple might have rushed the release of Apple Intelligence. Releasing Apple Intelligence as early as possible might have been a top priority for Apple, given the rapidly growing interest and reliance on AI in this space. If this is true, it would be quite contradictory to how Apple usually does things. Apple is known to take more time to focus on perfecting a feature rather than focusing on releasing it as soon as possible. We've seen in this video that Siri has had its highs and lows, but what's next for it? What does the future hold for Siri? Well, there are a couple of areas that Apple seems to be headed towards when it comes to improving Siri. First, it's thought that Apple is working on their very own large language model, or LLM, for Siri. The intention here may be to eventually replace ChatGPT with an equivalent solution that is developed in-house. The likely reason for a change like this would be the notion of control. While Apple has integrated ChatGPT into Apple Intelligence, including Siri, Apple doesn't have full control over ChatGPT because ChatGPT is the property of OpenAI, not Apple. On the other hand, other LLMs like the Google Gemini are developed fully in-house, giving Google full control over its LLM. In such a case, if Google wishes to take Gemini in a particular direction, there wouldn't be obstacles that might be present if Gemini were the property of another developer. That might be an issue that Apple is experiencing right now, and as such wants to address it by dropping ChatGPT in favor of its own LLM. Second, it looks like Apple wants to use Siri for even more devices. This includes a class of new devices that are more likely to rely on voice input, including a smart home display and smart glasses. Now, it's one thing for Apple to successfully develop and release such devices, and it's another thing to ensure that Siri's integration into those devices is seamless, especially if they're going to be heavily reliant on Siri. There will likely be new sets of commands that are unique to those sorts of devices, and so it's a top priority for Apple to make sure that Siri is able to handle such commands well, among a bunch of others, of course. Overall, I think it's been wonderful to witness the birth and growth of Siri over the last 14 years. The future seems packed with rather exciting changes and I very much look forward to it. But more importantly, I look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. And feel free to let me know in the comments if there is anything tech that you're interested in and want me to make a video about. In the next video, we're going to be discussing the highly anticipated return of a certain Android smartphone lineup that has been absent for years. I think it's going to be very interesting, so make sure to tune in for that. Also, please consider supporting me by donating to my channel through buymeacoffee.com. I would really appreciate any support as I continue to bring fun and interesting content like this. Only if you can, of course. Link is down below.
This was The Wizard of Tech, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.